All right, welcome everybody on our Zoom platform and Facebook Live. This is Lance Luke and Martin Pea um, <clears throat> back from Hollywood. And we're going to give you the rundown on some tips on how to be a celebrity expert. This webinar is presented by Expert Media Matters, which is a digital marketing consultation company that Martin and I own. And um, it's presented by National Marketing Experts, which is myself and Martin Pea. Martin is going to be the back end guy, making sure everything is running correctly. And then he's going to be uh, <clears throat> looking at our uh, platform for uh, chat or Q&A. If you guys have any comments or questions, uh, just put some images up here. Um, when I was at Hollywood getting an award for, uh, I think it was a best-selling author or something like that. And then my uh, friend, Jack Canfield, who's the author of Chicken Soup for the Soul, uh, that uh, book or the book series sold 500 million copies. So wouldn't it be nice if uh, you wrote a book that sold that many copies? But anyway, that's a, a friend of mine and a, a mentor. And then why do we do this uh, Ask the Expert series? Well, we do it to help small business owners, entrepreneurs uh, build, manage, and market online. So whether you own your own business or you're starting a business or you work for a company, but you have a side hustle in this gig economy, uh, you want to get yourself more known, this, that's what this is all about. Get known now, get known. Uh, <clears throat> the more known you are, uh, chances of uh, chances are the more money you can make and the more uh, popular you are. So today's topic is becoming the celebrity expert in your field because you are. If you don't think you're an expert and you excel in, in something, uh, you are an expert. If you have knowledge or uh, skills that are superior to the average layperson, then believe it or not, you're an expert whether you like it or not, or whether you think you are. But when it comes to marketing and promoting yourself, don't you want to be known as an expert rather than just, you know, another restaurant owner or another cook or another artist or another chiropractor or massage therapist or uh, social media manager, okay? You don't want to be known as just one. You want to be known as like in a higher higher tier, higher category. So that's what we're gonna to do today and to talk about this. So you're, <clears throat> you are Joe Cool, you are cool and awesome. You are unique, you are cool. Now, everybody is different. Everybody looks different. They have different personalities, different mannerisms. So not everybody is exactly the same. Otherwise, if we are, we'd be clones or robots, right? And it'd be hard to figure out who's who or who's what or who can do something better than the other person. So that's what we're, we're all about. Now let's talk about branding yourself, your image. Okay, so uh, you, you are your brand. It's your image, your mission, your values, your vision. That's you. It, it, you own your company and you're putting yourself out. It's basically you as a personality, you as a person, not the company. Now, there's ways you can brand the company and that's fine too. But if you're the, the main person, if you're the principal in your company, it's basically you, not anybody else. So how do you brand yourself? Well, you get a, a nice looking logo that kind of corresponds to what your company does and, and make it all fit your mission, your values, your vision, how you treat clients or customers, that's all gonna be all part of that pot in, in the brand. So the, the brand is basically a marketing uh, technique or a promotion. And why do you wanna do this? Because the more people know about your brand, the better. So if I tell you or ask you, well, name some of the most popular brands that you can think of. Well. I've done that before on uh, actual live seminars and people raise their hand or they shout out uh, Coca-Cola or IBM, Tesla, uh, Amazon. And those are brands. And how do, 
how did these companies get so popular? Well, they got so popular because of their marketing and promotion. Okay? And they have a lot of money. And so they're able to, to put millions in uh, marketing. Like look at uh, the Pro Bowl commercials that cost millions of dollars. And only the heavy hitters can pay that kind of money for a 30 second commercial, right? So they're, they're already a brand, they're already popular, but they don't want people to forget them. And that's why they're doing the advertising. So small business owners are kind of at a disadvantage because we don't have millions of dollars to, to promote, market, advertise, and uh, spend money on TV ads, radio ads, print media. You know, if you had a, a one page ad in the New York Times, guess how much that costs? It costs thousands of dollars. Or you want to put up a, a big billboard at Times Square in New York, you know, that costs a lot of money too. But if you don't have that kind of money, you know, what do you do? Well, you start small. And we're going to talk about that, how, how you can do it with the least amount of money. But if you want to spend money, there's ways to do that too. So are, are, you, are you one of these? And there's, there's different <clears throat> titles. And it basically all means kind of the same thing. So if you're a thought leader, well, what is a thought leader? Well, a thought leader is somebody who leads and they have some, some thoughts that are, you know, maybe uh, good, good thoughts. And so they're known as a thought leader. Uh, subject matter expert is another title, authority figure, master, uh, guru, professional, celebrity. Now, if you're a um, professional sports player, like uh, NFL football player, all right, you're actually um, a professional, right? But you could be a master um, and you could be a celebrity. In fact, many, many are. Or if you're a Dal Dalai Lama or if you're a, a great singer, um, you know, you're already up there already. Or if you're a rock star, like uh, in, in the group Kiss or other rock groups, that's kind of what you want to be. So if you think about what you want to be in terms of not the average person, you want to be above average. So what do you what do you do to achieve that? Now, there's other terms like professor. You remember that show Gilligan's Island and there was a professor well, that guy was the smartest person on the island. He would invent all kinds of things. So a professor is a good title. In fact, professor is used in, in martial arts. And my grandfather and father uh, were black belt and their title was professor, Professor Luke. Okay? And so that gives an uh, authority figure already when, when you hear that title. Um, also, uh, grandmaster in, you know, there's, there's grandmaster in Kung Fu and already, you know, just from that title that that person is very skilled. Uh, also the word master, like master chef or master plumber, um, that gives you the connotation that this person is above the average. They have special skills on uh, more than the average person. A guru also, think about a guru high on the mountaintop and people got to climb the mountain to go ask the guru one question. And the question is like, what is the purpose of life or something like that? And a lot of cartoons, the guru gives some kind of lame answer and then the person got to climb back down the hill. Uh, also, the term doctor, as you know, a medical doctor already is, you know, in a different level, but uh, there are situations where people use the term doctor, like if you're an uh, auto mechanic, you're known as a car doctor. And there's uh, people that are actually advertise and promote that. I know somebody who has a company called House Doctors, and they're a home inspection company. Okay, so you can use doctor. Also, another um, newer word is influencer. Another word is specialist or uh, the general um, there's also uh, fashionista, uh, people who are into fashion and they have a lot of followers. Their title is the fashionista. 
uh, rock star. Normally, when I talk to people uh, about this subject, I say, do you want to be a rock star or known as a rock star? Here's, here's how to do it. And, you know, kind of, even if you're not musically inclined, just the idea of being known as a rock star is something good. Now, uh, there's also uh, realtors who provide home buyer seminars, and, and they're known in, uh, in the field as an expert in home buying. And then you have contractors who put on seminars, and they're known as a remodeling experts. Okay, so you could do the same thing too. Also, if you ever won an award, and it doesn't have to be a specific award for a national award, it could be a local, local award, use that title or use that um, idea. And now you become an award-winning somebody. So let's say you, you're a cook or you own a restaurant and you submitted a recipe and it won some kind of award. Now you, you're uh, an award-winning uh, cook, okay? Now, if you're an artist, let's say you're a painter and uh, you won some awards, now you're, you're uh, an award-winning artist. You're an award-winning painter. I have a, a good friend, his name is uh, <clears throat> Jimmy um, Tablante and he's won several awards and he could use award-winning artists, award-winning watercolor artists or award-winning painter or something like that. And he could use that in his promotion. So um, use everything you can to help promote yourself. Okay, now let's see what else I have. So you, you don't have to be an expert in everything. If you're an expert and you have superior knowledge in one thing that's more than the average lay person, you're, you're an expert in, in that area, okay? Even if you don't think you are, in promotion, you wanna be that expert. You wanna be that person. You wanna have people look up to you. You wanna be an influencer. If you're a business owner and you have a, a business Facebook page or Instagram or personal page, you, you want to have uh, people that are your followers. And the more you have, the better. Okay? And you don't want just numbers because people can say, I have 5,000 Facebook friends. Okay, but uh, how many of those friends are going to help promote you and your business? And how many are active? If you have 5,000 Facebook friends and none of them are active and they don't engage with you and help promote, then that's not a good number. If you have 100 Facebook friends and, and 50 of them are engaging with you in conversation on Facebook and helping to promote whatever product or service you have, that's better than having 5,000 Facebook friends that aren't really doing anything, okay? So keep that in mind. Also, you have to be you. Don't copy somebody else. Be creative. You're the person. How creative are you? When you think about it, what is your field? You got to think about what do you do as a profession? What kind of products are you selling? What kind of services are you providing? How are you going to distinguish yourself from the next person, the next artist, the next painter, the next massage therapist or the next restaurant okay there's competition out there and so what you want to do is say all right how am I going to be different from my competition how how am I going to be noticed more okay and remember we just got finished if you're if you're in Hawaii we just got finished with with a big election okay and let me take you back into time a little some of these politicians were already known. Some were not known. Some, we didn't, we didn't even know who they were. And they, they come out and they, they're running for office. So how do, these, how do these people get known? Well, they had to spend money on making postcards, mailing postcards, sending brochures out. Uh, getting people to support the campaign and going door to door in, in whatever neighborhood. They're out there every day holding signs and waving to people in, uh, on, on the roads, on the freeways. Well, not freeway, but on, 
on the highways leading to the freeways. And um, they, they hold their town hall meetings. They want to be on radio. They want to be on the news. So think of it as if you want to become popular, what would a politician do? What would an unknown politician do? The known politicians are, are doing the same thing because they want to get your vote too. So go back in time and think about, all right, if I'm running for some political office, how am I going to get known? How am I going to get the people to, to know who I am? How, how, are they going to, how am I going to get the people to believe my platform? And, and that's a way to do it. And I'll show, share with you other ways to do it. But all these politicians are doing the same thing. When they're running for office, everybody's doing the same thing, making signs, holding signs, waving, uh, printing postcards out. I go to my mailbox and I get 20 postcards and brochures and flyers, some uh, at my door. So in a, in a way, that's what you kind of have to do to get yourself known, get yourself out there, okay? But don't copy anybody else. So the idea is you tell your story, not someone else's. So the question is, what's your story? What is your story? Do you have a story to tell? If you do not have a story, then you got to think of one because how are you going to get the word out? You think of how you're going to get the word out. How are you going to market? How are you going to promote your company? You got to come up with your own story. You can't steal somebody else's. Okay? If you steal somebody else's story, that story belongs to that other person and people are going to go, hey, I heard this before. But you want to think about something, something new, something exciting, something that's going to be catchy. Uh, you want to come up with a hook that's going to draw people in. And I'll tell you more about how you can do that in social media posts, too. So ask various experts for help. You go to um, some digital marketing companies that specialize in social media marketing or marketing in general, and you ask them for help. Now, sometimes it may be they can help you and sometimes not. Some, oh, okay, well, if you're interested, uh, let me send you my, uh, my rate sheet or whatever. And you might say, well, okay. Well, I would agree to that and see how much they charge. And then you know, maybe you can get pricing scheduled. But if you don't have the money or you're not willing to part with the money, Okay, then you try to find free consultation. And there's free consultation available in different, uh, in Hawaii and different parts of the United States. And there's different agencies that are uh, free consultation uh, companies or businesses. They actually uh, can be a mentor and do it for free. Okay, if you wanna spend money, then you can go to the next tier. Ask various experts for help. Now, if you're too scared because of the cost, well, how do you know they're gonna charge you, okay? So subject matter, matter experts, why you should use them and how to find them? Well, what is your field? You do a internet search and you might put subject matter experts on massage therapy or, uh, making surfboards or how to run a retail store. And they, there's actually consultants that are specialized in that field. They're the leader and you wanna reach out to them. Now, people who are in, let's say the speaking or book writing, and there's a ton of them out there and you can reach out to them. And a lot of times, if you go on their website, they provide free information. They may have a free template on uh, public speaking or how to, how to set up your first um, book or how to self-publish or things like that. So don't be hesitant on reaching out to these people. And even if, and you know, what you do is you take all the free stuff that they offer and then you look into, uh, you know, what they offer as a consultant to get paid, that's how they earn their money. And if you're interested, you may want to subscribe to uh, a course or two. 
and and that, that's what I did. I reached out. When you reach out to these subject matter experts, sometimes you, you can get free information and sometimes they're willing to help you and other times uh, they just keep bombarding you with sign up for this course, uh, get this free uh, workbook. And then after that, if you're interested, you know, sign up for the course or attend a webinar or whatever. So uh, I'm not saying do not pay. I'm saying if you're interested, it may be worth it to pay uh, to watch a webinar or to sign up for a course. And if it works for you, better yet, that's money well spent. To me, that's, that's an investment okay, in, your, in your business. Use social media. If social media is the platform and to get the word out for the least amount of cost. Now, how much money is it to, to run a, a ad in a newspaper or magazine, even if it's localized? How much money does it cost to run a TV commercial? How much money does it cost to put a 30 second uh, radio ad? Okay, and compare to the money that you can spend on social media from free to $20, $50 a month or, or, or more, it depends on uh, your activity. So as you know, there's Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and TikTok is now really coming up. TikTok is actually uh, gonna, gonna soon overtake some of these social media platforms because a lot of uh, younger generation people are using TikTok. And now the traditional business owners are, are now looking into it. Some have actually started already. So use the social media uh, platform as much as you can. And if you keep posting and it's free, I mean, you're not paying to post, but make your posts relevant. Don't just post things that aren't interesting. You got to kind of mix it up between personal stories and uh, business. And don't come out and just say, hey, I'm the best so-and-so, you know, hire me. You have to kind of lead into that. And, and here's what I do. I'm actually a, a building expert. And I don't make a post saying, hire me. I'm, you know, the best building expert or blah, blah, blah. I start posting things that are relevant. Like I take a picture of buildings and I say, what's wrong with this? Or a crack in a building or... Um, a sidewalk that's lifted and I put a post. Do you see anything wrong with this picture? And so that's the way I generate interest. And believe it or not, people like games. They like to play games. Even if I don't give away any prizes, they, they want to take a shot at giving the answer. I post a picture of rusted railings and I say, what's wrong with this? And people post and you create excitement. I'm not telling them I'm the the building expert, I'm not telling them to hire me, but I keep doing that. And by virtue of doing that, people get interested and they, they engage in the conversation. So even if it's not talking, you're posting. And I consider that conversation too. So you're engaging people and then slowly, uh, it may take a year or two, so many people go, oh, I, I saw, you know, I've been seeing your, reading your posts about all these cracks in a building and problems and all that. Uh, you know, I, I own an apartment building or I'm a property manager of a condo. And I, I want to ask you if you're willing to come down and take a look at my building because I see similar cracks or rusted railing or things like that. And that's how I'm able to, to generate income from free posting on social media, okay? So you can do the exact same thing with your business. Okay, I, I just take, take what I know and what my business is and I kind of make posts similar to what my, the function of my business is. So I'm not coming right out and if I keep posting and go, I'm the greatest building inspector, I'm, I'm the greatest Facebook marketing expert or social media expert. If we keep doing that, people are going, we're tired of hearing that story. You're probably not even that good if you got to keep advertising that you are. So I 
I create an image of myself as the expert, even before I say I'm the expert. But fortunately, I, I've been given, given titles of uh, Hawaii building expert and national building expert uh, from other people. So I just run with it. Okay, so you can probably do the same thing. All right, also, how do you market yourself? Well, maybe try a blog, do a podcast, uh, do a newsletter, do a webinar. Look at what we're doing. Just copy what Martin and I are doing. We set up this webinar series on social media marketing and because that's what we do. But whatever your company is, you could set up a webinar series or just give one webinar on what, whatever, whatever it is and uh, you know, advertise, market it before the webinar. Um, how many of you business owners actually have a newsletter? Okay, not many, right? So if you're not doing these things, try it. Set up a blog, even if you don't post that much. Um, I know somebody that, somebody that is an electrical uh, consultant and he makes um, some uh, blog posts to his blog and Man, it's, it's very interesting. If, if you need electrical uh, consultation, uh, this guy is an expert in the field. So by virtue of, of writing articles for his own blog, he, he's not tuning his own horn. He doesn't need to because when you read it, you already know that this guy knows what he's talking about, right? So he, he's an expert. So even if you're not there yet, the more blog you do or podcasts or you know newsletter webinar write articles and things like that the more the more out there you're going to be the more known you're going to be if you want to become uh, a hermit or live in a cave or uh, if you're in a witness protection program no one's going to know who you are right and you're, you're hiding you have to actually come out of your shell and if you're not willing to do that as a business owner then maybe get a spokesperson uh, to, to do that for you. That's why some of these companies, they hire, they pay big money and they hire, uh, you know, sports uh, people. They hire celebrities that are actors or actresses to help market their product. There's a few people like that My Pillow guy, you know, he's the owner of the company and he's going on and talking about, uh, his product, but maybe you don't have the money for that, so you you do it on your own. Try to get yourself out there. It doesn't it it, it doesn't hurt. You just gotta try it. Okay? Also, send out press releases. I gave a webinar on uh, press releases, how to get free press releases. Uh, you can write a book, and so. The press releases, you can do it free. If you want to pay, uh, that's fine too. If you pay, your audience is wider, okay? Um, I say everyone should write a book. You mean like, yeah, right. Everyone's not qualified to write a book. And well, well, can you, can you talk? Can you write an article? Can you write a chapter of a book? If you can, can you even talk about your business, okay? So if you were interviewed, if I, if I was a newscaster and I said, hey, John, uh, I'm going to interview you about your business and it's going to be a five minute, 10 minute interview. Uh, are you up for it? And you say, yeah. So the interview, what data, what information, what things can you say to help promote yourself in your company? Okay, so you translate that into maybe a chapter in a book. And you may, if you don't want to write your whole book, you start off writing chapters and eventually you get enough chapters, put it all together. And guess what? It's a book or a booklet. It doesn't have to be 200 pages long. A book could be 90 pages long. Okay. Or there's another idea. And I've done this before. You write only one chapter and it's put into a um, compilation and you have 20 or 30 different writers write their own chapters and you put into a compilation book, uh, a business book or a cookbook or whatever. And then that's your book, right? 
it's your book because you contributed one chapter. You didn't write the whole book, but you don't have to. Okay, so that's a start. And how, how did I get my start? I first got published in uh, 1974. I was in college and uh, there was this, I think it was Bamboo Writers or something. Anyway, it was some kind of thing the school was promoting. And they had it, they had like an article in the, in the school new, newspaper and it said, if you, if you wrote a, a poem or you wrote a short story and you want to enter it in this contest, um, you know, submit your entries by the state. And I had written um, a couple of short stories and poetry, but actually it wasn't really a poem. It was, a, it was lyrics for a song. Okay, so I entered about four, I think. And uh, two of them got chosen and it got published in the book. And I was so excited because I never, I never was ever published in a book before. And although, you know, the, the lyrics to the song was actually listed under poetry, it was one page, big deal. I you know, had my name in print and they distributed copies to all the students in the school and you can order extra copies, and uh, I, I was I was so proud because I'm like, okay, I guess I'm a writer now, or a published writer. Okay, so it's different from being a, a writer could be anybody who can just write, but if you're a published writer, and people ask, well, what were you published in? Well, I was published in this uh, university publication. And, oh, okay, well that's interesting, and uh, I also. Uh, submitted letters to the editor about different community matters that I had an interest in. And now I'm a, a published, uh, uh, you know, my letter was published in the newspaper. I don't know what you call it, but uh, I was published in the newspaper. So I kind of got, kind of got used to that. So I'm, I'm not afraid to write press releases. And even if you have to fine tune it and revise it 10 times or 20 times, once it's out there, it's out there and your name's on there and it's part of promotion. And Martin and I have done press releases too. We've written books also. Um, so that's what you could do. And then do all these things that I mentioned to, to work to keep your raving fans. And your raving fans are actually your, your existing clientele, your customer base, your clients. They're also your potential customers or clients, okay? So you never know what could be around the corner. Now we're nearing the end and I'm sharing you the EMM Lucky 7 Tips, uh, Becoming the Celebrity Expert. EMM stands for Expert Media Matters. And let's go down the list. Brand yourself, your image, be creative, be you. Don't copy someone else. Now, if, you, if somebody is really great, you can try to copy them, but uh, tweak it so that it's not like a direct clone, right? Because that's not going to work. Tell your story, not someone else's. Now, you could tell someone else's story if it's a lead-in to your own story, okay? So that's something that you could do. Ask vari various experts for help. Don't be scared. They can, if they say no, then they say no, but sometimes you never know who's, who's gonna help you. Okay, use social media, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, TikTok, and more. Try a blog, podcast, newsletter, webinar. Now, here's something. If you don't wanna do your own podcast, try to get on someone else's podcast to help promote. I've been on other people's podcast radio shows where they invited me because they needed a speaker on a certain topic. I think one of them, uh, I, I got invited. Uh, he's a, a book writer and he, he wrote a book and he was giving a radio show podcast on, um, on book writing. So he needed somebody to interview because he didn't want to talk the whole time uh, by himself. 
Okay, so that's something that you could do. There's different uh, podcast entities or services that you could check into that. Uh, send out press releases, write a book, or write a chapter in a book, or write an article and submit it to a, a newspaper or magazine. And then work to keep your raving fans. It's always, always good. You want to keep up. You cannot just promote once or twice and and then rest. Okay? You got to keep doing it all the time and uh, keep posting as much as you can, but make your post count. If you don't have anything good to say, then maybe skip a day and then post something when you have some, some good content. Okay? So basically, in a nutshell, that's how to become the celebrity expert. Now there's other things involved in it too, but um, these are the, are the basics. The more you're out there, it's like networking. The more you're out there, you never know uh, what's, what's gonna happen. Okay, but if you don't do anything, no one's gonna know you, right? All right, so let's see what else we have. Um, previous webinars on social media posts, uh, we've given on marketing, you can go to our website. We have our webinars on demand. You can watch whenever you want. You don't need a Netflix account. Uh, that's go to our website. I'll give you that. That's what you missed. Um, we've given a lot of different webinars on uh, branding, get known now, uh, websites, uh, public speaking, uh, press releases, and that kind of thing. And then what's up coming up? Um, we have uh, how to write a, write a book and make money, how to give away free stuff and make money. Uh, so that's what's coming up. You go to our website. Our website is askmarketingexperts.now.site. If you want free uh, business marketing books, then Martin and I uh, wrote these two books. One is Promote Your Small Business Online Today to Survive. And the other one is the ultimate small business game changer, promote your business for $47 a month. Um, right now, we also include uh, lead generation for another 47 or so dollars a month. For under $100 a month, you could have social media marketing uh, posts and uh, lead generation. So it's, it's good stuff. So, that's the end. Um, if you have any questions and answers after, uh, you go to info at expertmediamatters.com. Our phone number is 808-202-2384. That's our office number. And once again, our website is askmarketingexperts.now.site. And basically, that's it for today. I'm going to uh, stay on with Martin and uh, we'll be able to answer any questions that you guys have or comments on our Zoom platform or Facebook. And I'll stop share screen uh, soon so I can turn it over to Martin. So, uh, Martin, are you around? Yes, I'm here, Lance. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, sounds good. Okay, okay. I want to make sure I'm communicating all right with you. Uh, yeah, we've had, uh, I'm checking our chat on Facebook and Zoom. I haven't seen any uh, particular chat or hand raised questions here, but we've, we've had some that came in earlier. So let me see what, uh, what we have here. First question is, I post daily to Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and I'm still not a celebrity. Oh, wow. How long does this entire process take? How can I speed things up? Okay, it may take years. It may take two, three, five, ten 10 years to, to get to that point. Um, remember now, your posts have to be kind of creative and it has to have good content. You can't, you can't just post anything. So if your posts are boring, uh, that that may not help. So um, it, it's good that you keep posting, but you got to post quality uh, content. So the the key is uh, 
quality over quantity. So if you make one, let's say Facebook post and it's like a super post, then you might wait a couple of days so it doesn't get buried among other posts that you're posting that may not be as relevant. So be cognizant of the fact that what you're posting is relevant to the situation. Um, and people like personal stories too. So I, I not only post about business stuff, I you know, put in some uh, things about travel, uh, you know, Chinatown, if I go to Chinatown, or uh, food, food stuff. Um, so kind of be diverse in your posts, but gear, gear your posts to kind of semi direct uh, promotion. Okay, so it's relative to what your business is, and, and keep doing that. Now, if you keep making posts, that may not be everything that you need to do you may need to to do some some uh, advertising on google or facebook or instagram so think about that too so in other words you may need to spend some money if what you're doing is is not working but there's other other ways to 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 do things right like i said uh webinar podcast blog or things like that so if you're posting information to help people, already you're setting yourself up as, as the expert or becoming the expert because you're posting stuff relative to your business. And it, it has to be, of course, helpful to, to other people, right? So um, just keep that in mind. If you just keep posting just for the sake of posting, and there's no quality content, then it's not really going to get anywhere. You're going to actually lose viewers by doing that. But, you know, make it make it more exciting. Have a game, have a contest, uh, things like that. If you need more information, just reach out to us and, um, you know, we'll, we'll give you we'll give you the same information that we give our our paying clients. Okay? So hopefully that helped. Well, that's good. That's good, uh, Lance. And, and I, I kind of made a comment in Facebook while you were talking too, is that to be an expert like Lance Boot, you need to educate, inform, and entertain in your area of expertise. So it's it's like you say, it's, it's uh, about really sharing a, a lot of valuable information in a lot of different ways. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that. Sure. Yeah, next. Next question we get here is, um, can you give us a little more info on branding? I have a very nice and catchy logo and I post to social media sites. So what else do I need to do to get more exposure? Okay, so the question is to this, um, this viewer, you have a nice logo, do you have a website? Is your logo on your website? What, do you, what does your website look, look like? Do you have a static website um, that's all text? Do you have a photo on your, on your website? Do you have videos in your website? If you do not have videos in your website, you're like behind the times, okay? So maybe take a short two minute video of yourself talking about your product or service or what you do and post it on your website. Post a video on social media. Um, repurpose content. So Martin and I are always repurposing content. We take one uh, webinar or one social media post and we can turn it into different other things that we do. We can take that article that we posted on our social media platform and put that article on our website. So a lot of companies, businesses that I've done consulting with they haven't revised their website for two, three, even five years. It looks the same like it did five years ago. That doesn't cut it. You need to keep, keep it refreshed. I actually change my website every, every two years. Okay? Um, and sometimes I totally revamp the website, start all over. Sometimes I tweak certain pages. And that's, that's how you're going to do it. You can't just post and expect that to be the end-all be-all 
thing. So you got to do different things, like I mentioned. So social media posts, you got to do a website, right? Use your nice logo all over the place, okay? And and that help that helps. Some companies make uh, bumper stickers. You want to make uh, a postcard or flyer. You know, whatever your industry is, come up with different ideas on how you can market, right? If you do a mailer, postcards, or you have an email uh, database, you do the same thing. You make a nice flyer with your uh, brand, promote your brand, your logo, and your vision statement, and you send it as a newsletter or, or maybe just a flyer. It doesn't have to be a newsletter. It could be just a flyer saying, you know, introducing um, blah, 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 so-and-so, we have a special this month or something, right? So keep things different, keep things ongoing. Um, also copy what other people are doing too, right? Other businesses doing. Um, there's a lot of information that that's out there via mail and it's brochures, uh, business cards, uh, postcards, flyers that are being mailed all, all over the place. So you may be interested in doing something like that too, but identify your target market because you don't want to blanket everybody. You want to look at your target audience and who, who are the people you want to want to work with. And that's who you promote to. Okay. Cause then your dollars are being well spent. So hopefully that helped. Yeah, that's good, Lance. Thank you. Um, the next question that came up was, how many Facebook groups have you personally joined? Oh, personal questions now. Facebook groups? Yeah. I'm kind of, I kind of don't want to say, but uh, in answer to the question, I think the number is about 65 or 70. And that's way, way too many Facebook groups. But I got caught up in this Facebook group uh, frenzy. Okay? And because I do different things, I have a construction management company doing engineering. I join uh, engineering Facebook groups, building code Facebook groups. Uh, because of my uh, social media marketing, marketing or business marketing, I joined a lot of uh, business Facebook groups. And then uh, recently, uh, Martin and I got involved in uh, promoting lead generation. So I joined a bunch of lead generation Facebook groups, and they're all over the world. But that's a come. I got so many. Now, how many, how many of these Facebook groups am I really active in? Ah, probably about three. So it's kind of crazy. I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I'm not a proponent telling you to join as many Facebook groups as you can. So, but by, by joining different groups, I, uh, I can use that for promotion. So for instance, one group has 50,000 uh, members. So when I, I make a, a, a post to the Facebook group, you know, maybe 5,000 members see it, but the numbers are there, but it doesn't make sense. And I can tell you this, I, I'm, I'm in too many. It doesn't make sense to join all these groups if you're not participating. And, and I'm guilty of not participating because of, of lack of time. So uh, I may end up going through and, and unsubscribing from these groups, but I don't think it's, it's the time yet because there's no penalty for, for being in a group and not re responding or not being active. Although there's a few smaller groups that they encourage people to post, and uh, I may get a Facebook message every once in a while going, hey, you've been, you've been in our group for six months now. We haven't heard from you. What's up? You know, or something like that. Or there's even some where uh, they say, if you don't make posts, you know, a quarterly or whatever, we're going to take your name off our group or something like that. Okay, so, and, and these groups are, are actually... A lot of them are in, in the United States. Some of them are in Hawaii. The small business groups that I'm in um, are, are in Hawaii. And then uh, you have 
I have a whole bunch that are business marketing and lead generation and they're worldwide. So um, I'm surprised that uh, the question was asked, but if you ask me, should you join a lot of Facebook groups? I may say, if you have the time to dedicate to spend, the only reason to join is to, to promote your business basically. And some say uh, you can join, but you can't promote your business. You have to, network and help other people, right? So um, I, I did not join purposely to promote my business. I joined because I wanted to network with other like-minded people who are in, in the same uh, arena that I'm, I'm in, like other engineers. I wanna know what's going on, what their problems are, and you know what, what their needs are, what's happening, what's the newest stuff in the industry. I joined the social media marketing Facebook groups because I want to keep ahead on, on in the latest and greatest in the in the social media marketing world. So, um, and I subscribe to a lot of publications too. I don't have time to read every single thing, but I got to weed it out too. But that's how I keep up with stuff. So it's 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 all good. Yeah, thanks, Lance. That's a good answer too. Yeah, and. And like you say, a lot of it is uh, groups you want to be uh, engaging and involved in. So it's kind of, like you said, depends on your purpose. But uh, that's the thing about even social media, getting in all the social media. You know, you want to do it with the intent of engaging and interacting and really getting to know the, the people in the group that can, you know, be a mutual benefit to you and them. Yeah, so good. good yeah, answer. well, let, let, me, let me tag on to that. It's sort of like... Um, Remember when we used to attend these, these business functions and you belong to some organization? So, so let's say we belong to a Social Media Marketing Club of Hawaii and it's a real, um, a, a, a real organization, it's an association and we have you know, quarterly meetings. If we belong to that group, but we don't attend the meetings, we're not networking, right? So uh, I understand Lack of time, people are busy, but what is the purpose? You don't join a group because you, you do not want to participate. You join a group because you want to participate. You want to be part of the action. You want to contribute something and learn from other people who are in the same industry. That's the reason. So you treat it like a, 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 you know, a real brick and mortar association where you go to the meetings and you get to network and meet the old older people who have been in that organization a long time and you get to meet new people. And in the beginning, you're one of the new people, but eventually you become one of the older, older members, right? So that's the idea. If, if you're gonna join just to use the name, whatever, then I would say that's not the right reason for actually signing up. You, you, wanna, you wanna join in the conversation, you wanna participate, you, know, you want to be an active member. Uh, because I'm sure the uh, board of directors who are running the organization don't want all these members who are just going to join, pay their dues, and then not participate. That's not how to, how to run an effective organization. And that's, that's probably the leading cause of organizations uh, drying up and closing up shop and not having the organization because there's no participation. And when it's only the board members talking amongst themselves, that's that's not a very good sign. We got any other uh, comments or questions? Yeah, we we have one more, Lance. And yeah, what you said is, is so true. I mean, and it, it ultimately comes down to the the people, and that's that's what we're finding even in the new arena of lead generation. It's all about finding the right people, yeah, and having people that that uh, work with you and do what you need to do as a as a team. So. Good, good answer and good, good response. So, let me hit you with this last one that I that we've got here, and it's uh, it seems like almost all of the ideas you have talked about today, there's little to no cost. Sounds good to me. Um, how much money have you actually? Spent? <laughs> oh, another personal question. How much money have you actually spent promoting yourself? And the next question is, what has been the actual return? So what's your ROI here, Mr. Luke? Who, who, who asked that? Is it my CPA? 
I don't know. I, I don't can't really anyway, I, I appreciate I appreciate all the questions, even if it's more personal in nature. Uh, as you know, from and if you if it's a first there your first time attending this webinar, you may not know our background. Uh, if you've attended our webinars before, uh, <clears throat> you know that what we do and the information that I share with you is actually personal in nature. All the information that I, I, I've been sharing with you on past webinars and sharing it with you today are actually things that I did myself, things that Martin and I did. Um, we're, we're living proof of this information. We're not, we're not reading some um, a dummy uh, textbook or some university uh, book or some book that was written by somebody saying how to become a celebrity expert. We're, we're not doing that. We're, we're giving you information of how we did it. And we almost guarantee that it's going to work. If it doesn't, come back to us and, and let us know why. Maybe you didn't do something you should have or you you did something that you shouldn't have done or something like that, okay? So um, it's all from personal experiences, basically, that what we're um, telling you, what information. So uh, I don't have anything to hide. We don't have anything to hide. So, so back, back to the question. I'll give you one, one example, okay? In, in one year, um, I spent, about $20,000 to uh, write one chapter in one book, in a compilation book that um, I, I did not publish. There was a, a publishing company uh, called Celebrity Press that I um, went into their program. And the idea is you um, write a chapter and they compile it into a business book and uh, they release it. And uh, fortunately, the day it got released, it hit the Amazon bestseller list. So not only am I a published author, I'm a best-selling author. Okay, so I, I just use that credential. And you could do the same thing too. So I spent $20,000 on the book. And uh, I remember telling people, I was at a, a business organization and um, it was score, okay, and I'm a score mentor, and um, the book was hot off the press, and I, I've had uh, hardcover books, but then I ordered uh, paperback soft cover. So there were about 18 people that are score mentors in the score meeting, and before the meeting started, I went out, went to each person, and and gave each person one of the books, and and that same question somebody asked. How much did this cost? And I said twenty thousand dollars. And they go, "Well, that's kind of crazy. Why would you spend twenty thousand dollars on a book? And uh, you know, how, how much did you make selling it?" I said uh, zero. And I said, "Well, that's not even a good business investment if you're not even." I said, "No, I wrote the book because I I wrote it purposely for the reason not to sell it." And they go, "What?" And I said, "Yeah." I wrote it to give it away to help promote my business because the chapter was on building safety because I have a construction management company. Okay? So some of them laughed and they said, it's kind of crazy. You spend $20,000 to get this book out there and you're not selling the book and how are you making any money? So I said, okay, here's a short story. I go to a condo board meeting and normally before the book came out, uh, I'd introduce myself and pass out my business cards, right? So guess what? I introduced myself and passed out the book. I gave each board member a book. And that's, that was my business card. So I'm like, okay, I'm thinking, who, who ever went to a board meeting promoting their construction management services and gave a book instead of a business card? If you look at a business card and you look at a book, which is way more valuable, which is way more um intrinsic as far as are they gonna they can throw my business card away but what's the chances of throwing a book away people don't like to throw books away if they don't want it they donate it or give 
give the book to somebody else to read. So anyway, back to the story, okay? $20,000 investment. I ended up getting contracts because of the book. They're like, if this guy wrote a chapter in a book or he wrote a book, um, no, no one else that we interviewed wrote a book about this subject. He must know what he's doing. I want to hire him. So I got contracts, okay? not $20,000, $150,000. So is it a good investment? I think so. And I'm still using that book today. What I do is um, I made little booklets of only my chapter and I had a color copy of the front and back. And then I had only my chapter in, in the book. So it became a booklet. And then when Martin and I go to our building expo trade shows, we pass out those booklets um, to everybody, you know, as well as our business card and all that. So um, if you ask, was it a good investment? Yeah. Would I do it again? Definitely. If I had the opportunity to um, make that kind of money over one marketing um, promotion, yep, I'll do it time and time again. So anyway, uh, I noticed that we're kind of out of time, but any last comments or questions before we sign off? Uh, no, Lance, that's all we've got, but that's, uh, that's an important uh, story and an important lesson. Thank you. All right, so on behalf of Martin and I and Expert Media Matters, we thank you for attending. Go to our website and watch the other webinars we've given. Uh, attend the next webinars coming up. Our website, once again, is askmarketingexperts.now.site. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the information and we want you to also become a celebrity expert. So, so let's get to it. Until then, uh, thank you, aloha and mahalo. Wait, I'm stopping it.